Okay, hey, welcome everybody. Um, open up the this one, July 29, 2022 ad hoc redistricting meetings today. Um, it was called in part uh, by one of our board members who wanted to have further discussion on this, but I think you know we all welcome the opportunity to do so given um, some of the things that we've been uh, given to consider uh, since our last ad hoc meeting, both in the form of phone calls, emails, um, discussions among um, board members, and discussions with the superintendent. So um, given that, uh, and the upcoming vote on August 8th, uh, it was felt that it would be pretty prudent to have another uh, discussion uh, regarding the redistricting issue uh, ahead of that uh, vote. And so that's why we're here today. Um, I think uh, based on the emails that have been exchanged and some of the discussions that we've had and some of the things that we've received, received from um, the RTA in terms of the elementary level, I think we've re reached some agreement and correct me if I'm wrong, um, that the uh, elementary model uh, should be a K-4 model. Um, so if we're all in agreement on that, then we'll limit our discussion this afternoon to what the 5-8 uh, uh, class uh, levels should look like um, and some of the ideas uh, that we can consider in terms of putting together a model for those students. So uh, are we in agreement on that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that being the case, um, I'll go ahead and open it up to any four questions and any questions that any specific board members have. And then once we're done addressing those, um, we'll look to some of the emails. I've got about six or so sprawled out in front of me here with various questions, and we'll just go through those and maybe address them to Peter and see if he has some insight as to some of those inquiries. Um, and hopefully, as we go around the table, some of those inquiries will be answered, uh, and we don't have to go through the emails in detail. So um, I guess I'll just start it off. I don't, are you ready? Uh, Dan? I don't. I don't want to put. Yeah. You're not ready. All right. Is there anybody that's ready here to, to make a comment or ask a question with respect to the uh, the five six five eight models that are being considered? I got a question. Okay. For, for, Peter, for Peter, actually, um, <clears throat> the one of the models being proposed is five eight two two building, but to keep the five six separate from the five from the from the seven eight. How feasible and doable is that? Well, uh, we've talked about this. I think in a new build, it's extremely feasible mm -hmm. because you build a building right. to suit what you need. If you're going to try and retrofit Sproul, it becomes more challenging. Uh, but as I've said before, this model isn't starting for at least three school years. So you have three years of planning and development to figure out how you can make that happen. Okay. The There's a lot of variables in there because if you're going to if you're going to run the same bell schedule, you're going to have five and fifth and eighth graders on the same buses. And so you're mm -hmm. right off the bat from transportation, you're going to be intermittent if you're going to run the same bell schedule. Mm -hmm. So part of really you what I didn't hear what you said. If, if you run the same bell schedule right away, you're transporting fifth and eighth graders together. So you're you're not gonna they will be together on buses okay. if you run the same bell schedule. I didn't hear if we did if we we talked about last time having two bell schedules, so building within a building, mm -hmm. um totally doable if you're now you're not transporting together you're coming and going at different times you're going to really limit your opportunities to bump into each other can you say that they're 100 certainty that kids will never intermingle no you can't oh, because you may have a situation where you want to have a campus-wide four grade level event or something like that i mean it, it's tough to say right now but my recommendation would be if the, that is the concern right then you uh, we we go that route and we take time to study. We can there's lots and lots of buildings locally uh, and around the state and country that do a 5-8 model that we could go visit and talk to about how are you successful at making this work. Mm -hmm. And it's not a matter of just us. It's a, right. It's we have three years to work with the teachers association, administrative association board. How do we make this work to make it best for what we're looking to do? But I would say certainly a new build a lot easier right. than retrofitting Stroud. Um, the key to that would be the bell schedule. If you run the same bell schedule, it's a lot more challenging to keep the segregation of the building. But if it's two dagger times, it's pretty simple. It's two buildings, one campus. Mm -hmm. Someone else, go ahead. Go, go ahead. ahead. No. Well, I'm just thinking, so 
if I remember months ago, one of the big complaints of, and I'm not trying to go back to K-5, but there's a point in here. The big thing with K-5 was the feedback that we had heard, I think from the principal, and I'm not sure who else, that it would be jam packed if we tried to do a sixth grade annex or add sixth grade to Strau. So I'm just trying to play the numbers game of how is this really feasible without some sizable cost and renovation, especially knowing that we kind of, I think, originally kind of took that off the table for this same very reason. What are you talking about? I'll let you expand on it, but I think my understanding is you're going to cut the calculation of Stroud in half as well, because we're not going to have two middle schools instead of one. So I think right off the bat, you're going to have those students that are going to be. Yeah, I, I'm not sure I totally follow what your question is. Are, are you asking about the cost associated with the sixth grade annex? No, she's just talking about numbers wise, number of students within the building. And, and well, then there was some talk about putting what, kids what at Stroud and we would have needed an annex at Stroud in order to house those kids. If you're going to add a grade level, you would have needed that. Be yeah, if you Stroud no matter same, what. You eliminate half of the seven eight kids. Is what but then you can half of the five six. Yeah, the population yeah. would be same. roughly the same at Stroud. Mm -hmm. The number would be the same number of students. No matter what, Stroud needs a, a cafeteria. They need the new cafeteria space no matter what. And it really could use a second gym. Those are two things that were that I don't think a second gym was really ever an option in the last capital project. And I think a cafeteria was, but got cut out early on. I, I wasn't around for that, but both things are necessary. So in terms of cost and finances, if your buildings are K-4, you're going to save money on renovating the elementary schools because you don't need to create spaces that you would if they were K-5. So I would say it's probably you're looking at a wash either way because you're looking to build an elementary school or a 5A building. You're looking to renovate Strau in some way, shape, or form. If you're going to do K-5, sixth grade annex, your renovation of Strau is gigantic because now you're talking about adding an entire wing that can house 400 kids um, with probably some additional shared common spaces that you would also be building in the 5-8. Those are the types of questions that I, I wouldn't feel comfortable answering. I would leave those to our architects to say, here's the, like I said, we needed to say to architects, here's the model we'd like to do. You tell us how to best pull this off. And then after that, we have to, we're going to have to, the FEMA piece comes into play too. Like, what are they going to fund? So um, I'm still pretty confident that no matter what, uh, no matter what, we'll have plenty of money from FEMA and state aid to cover any, any renovations or additions that we need. It's just a matter of um, will we be able to go as, as crazy as we want to with some of the, the nice things for the K-4 schools, like the, the maker spaces and the, the, um, uh, the technology type stuff we want to try to get going at that elementary level. Are we going to be able to create spaces for those? Is the question. So Strau would be covered for the cafeteria and the gym with our capital project, or possibly the FEMA money. No matter what, it's all the covered. same thing. Okay. That's all going to be the same thing. Yes. Can I? I don't want to miss you. Can I just tug on that one more? <laughs> no. So it. Just the other piece of it. So I'll be honest, I obviously have not toured Strau. I'm not sure of the layout. I think I went to the second floor and the auditorium. So that's that's the extent I know of Strau. And I believe it was either the RTA president or vice president talked about how the building is currently laid out. And I don't want to get hung up on the current layout, but I do want to focus on equity uh, in buildings and being realistic about where we're putting our money with renovations and stuff. So for anyone that has been to Stroud, um, talk me through that layout. Cause from the feedback, it sounds like we put a lot of money into developing that building the way it is with the different uh, science labs and things like that. How much are we undoing by trying to add five, six? I don't know that you would undo anything, you would enhance it. You could make an argument that you could take out a couple of science labs if you're not going to keep it as a building that it is, but I would probably not recommend that. I think uh, I, I feel 
um, that our, our middle school science teachers feel that there needs to be a little more science infusion in grades five, six. So they're coming through, we're kind of doing that. So it'd be nice for them to have access to that. Um, the, the way the building is laid out is not conducive, in my opinion, to anything. It's so old fashioned, it's really challenging for student management. It's a giant square. And the bottom always have two cross sections that allow you to go between the square. The upstairs is just a giant rectangle and it's, it's one way traffic all the way around. So realistically, the upstairs is very conducive to segregating a, two sections of grade levels of kids because they're all upstairs and there's no anywhere else to go except for when you gotta go down to the cafeteria. But there's plenty of stairwells that you can make sure that you use certain stairwells for certain things. I think the challenge comes in um, your shared spaces, right? That's why I say you need a new cafeteria. You're going to need probably a second gym would be helpful to do things. And where you put those and how you place them will become part of the challenge that I think the architects will have to figure out. The other issue uh, that you'll run into is obviously your administrative offices, your counseling offices, your nurse's office. All those things are currently located on the first floor. But they're also located in a corner of the building uh, was surrounded by a stairwell. So technically speaking, if you're on the second floor and you needed to go to the nurse, you just go down the stairwell and the nurse office is right there. There's no reason to go down a stairwell and then walk through the hallways around other kids. So you could feasibly do some of that with some good traffic flow or you can uh, you can split the nurse's office and do something upstairs. It's That's all questions that we have to cover as we develop what the building will look like. I do think that uh, Stroud would need some careful attention. As I mentioned before, we have time to figure out how to make it work. I do think it would require a little bit more, obviously, than a simple, hey, two grade levels on the top floor and two grade levels on the first floor in the basement. We're all done. See ya. It's not going to be that simple, but I do think it's something that can be done with some good planning. And if the bells are scheduled or staggered, it makes it easier to control student, student flow in and out of the building. So, why don't you tell? <laughs> okay. All right. Um, just kind of shifting from the five eight back to the standalone five six seven eight. Well, not back to, but shifting to it. Um, and Peter, thank you for answering all of my questions last time about that. I mean, I, I understand what you're saying. I just Joe had mentioned how we have the new building. We can kind of build to suit five through eight. So my, my question is, the biggest thing that I remember that you saying about having a standalone five, six, was that just the sh sheer size, the amount of kids that would be in that building, that's what the major problem with doing something like that. My question is, with a new build, designing it how we want to design it, could any of those issues be eliminated with a new build for a five, six standalone? Um. Honestly, I would have to say yes. Uh, and I think I've said plenty of times before, every model will work. Every model can work because we have time to develop with a lot of stakeholders how to make it work. I would not advise a five, six standalone. And, um, and the reason I say that is because that is a time in the kids' lives that, and especially right now with fifth and sixth graders, they're maturing really fast. They test the waters pretty quickly. It takes a very special group of teachers to get into that niche. And it takes um, it takes a lot of administration um, strength to be able to, to work with 800 fifth and sixth graders, uh, especially kind of coming together. I think you've heard that time and time again, like, hey, Staley worked great when they had the right administrators. And people aren't wrong about that. But the second those veteran people, so let's just play it forward here in Rome, right? We open a five, six building. We're not going to hire a new principal. We're going to take someone that's in Rome, probably in an elementary school as an AP or a principal, knows the district, knows stuff, and we're going to put them in there. That's, that's what's going to happen. So we're going to have a veteran uh, leader who knows the district, knows the community, knows the kids around the building. That person may decide that they want to be a principal of a smaller K-4 building because the 5-6 building with 800 kids is taxing and it can burn you out in four years or so. So they might want to go on. They might want to move closer to home if they're not local or something like that. Now what you have left is a whole of a 5-6 building. And this is what happened with Staley. A 5-6 building that most administrators, if they're sitting administrators, they're going to look at that and say, that's a really challenging job. 
Uh, why would I leave my job of a K-4 school with three or 400 kids? Same pay, very comfy. Why would I do that? And what ends up happening is you end up with a revolving door of first-time administrators walking into a very challenging building with, it Staley didn't have a ton of support. That was before we didn't have social workers in the district at that point in time. Our, we did have counselors, but I don't think we had a lot of, we didn't have community schools the level we do now, right? So there's some variables that may help it, uh, but that would be my concern. If, if, as a superintendent telling you why I'd be concerned about a standalone five, six, it would be just that right there. Because the second that, the second that initial development plan starts to fall apart because of one reason or another, people retire, they want to, less kids to have to manage, whatever the situation is, it becomes very tough to replace that. And if that starts to deteriorate that support system for that program, the same thing that happened at Staley will happen all over again, in, in my opinion. Can you identify some of the issues that SE, SED uh, and maybe also some teachers in the district complained about about Staley when it was a five, six as well? Well, I think the biggest complaint from uh, the teaching faculty was student behavior. I mean, I think it was a, uh, as far as I'm aware, I don't, I don't know if they had many other, and student behavior comes along with then the revolving door of administrators, right? So it begins with student behavior. And if that's a challenge, that makes, that makes any teacher frustrated if their student management is very tough. And then if you have a revolving door of administrators, that's even more challenging and frustrating because you've got uh, one year, somebody new walks in the door and they tell you all the great things that they're gonna do and then they start doing them and they realize how hard the job is or maybe they don't have time to do what it is what they wanna do and then they their focus gets taken away from that. And for whatever reason, they're not there the year or two later and then somebody new walks in. And so as a teacher, that revolving door becomes extremely frustrating. When you don't know what you're getting on a kind of daily or a yearly basis, um, it's very stressful to not kind of understand the leadership style. And every principal is gonna be different. Some are gonna be pretty pro teacher. Some are going to be pretty pro student. Some are going to be, I'm walking into a door and I hear, I hear all these things and I'm going to come in and this is what I'm going to do when I start doing that. And that makes teachers upset. So I think, I think the student management was the biggest issue from the teacher's perspective. I think from SED's perspective, um, I mean, the school was identified as the school in need of improvement and academics were always a struggle there, but I think it always came back to student management, student behaviors and, and, and how, and, and I think, and I wasn't, it wasn't, it was only here for one year with the five, six buildings. So I only speak to that first year that I was here that, how, how that came about. But I think it was that transition of four to five and kind of, in my opinion, the teachers in the building ran it too much like a middle school and not enough like an elementary school. And the kids weren't quite ready for some of the types of things that they were doing within the school. And there was... And I just feel like that was probably something that has been that way for a long time at Staley because I think it's kind of, it's Staley, it's up elementary, they're going to middle school, we gotta get ready for middle school. Well, maybe fifth grade was a little too soon to do that. And then also, you know, you've got kids that are coming from K-4 settings that are used to really tiny schools. At that time, I think our largest elementary school was maybe 400, 430, it wasn't very big. Small settings to now all of a sudden they're in this big school with 800 kids, a lot less supervision. And so your kids that are gonna try and push limit at 10, 11, 12 years old, they push the limit and it was just challenging. What about academic readiness once they got to the seventh grade? Uh, I, I mean, again, I was only here for one year, but I, I, don't, I, I don't know that, um, I don't know that the middle school teachers would say that they were coming in 100% prepared for middle school, but I don't know that they would say that any different now. I, I, I think that's just a common trend. And I also would say, right, wrong, or indifferent, I think that every ninth grade teacher in the history of mankind will say kids are coming to ninth grade unprepared and the middle school is not doing enough for them. And every seventh grade teacher is going to say, oh, the kids are coming to middle school not prepared, the sixth grade is not doing enough. And if it was the fifth grade, I just think that that's kind of how we all feel, right? We all have this expectation of what the kids should be able to do and we want them to be able to do more than maybe they can. And, and so it, it's not really a knock. I don't think teachers are trying to knock their colleagues or we're not trying to knock them. I just think that's a pervasive type of feeling in the world of education. But I, I think um, in terms of academic, I don't have enough background knowledge of how the building was was structured that first year. I can just tell you my first year when it was open as a five six, it was nonstop, nonstop disciplinary issues. My phone would ring at no less than three times a day, 
when when Staley was open as a five six for a parent column was some kind of an issue. When it went to K six, it went down to maybe twenty times a month. And then the last year it was open with Mike and Sean, it went down to maybe fifteen times a year. I mean, we could potentially you could put a, a fifth grader with an eighth grader, and then it could go up to ten times a day. I mean, when you talk about the things that you're speaking of really a fourth grader going in with the fifth, sixth graders. Now, fourth grader is going to go in with a fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth grader. Um, so, and I don't, I want to make sure Elena is okay and got her question. Oh yeah, I'm done. Go ahead. So I am a hundred percent opposed uh, to two five eights. And I, I think I've spent the last few weeks listening to your proposal and, um, and you, you did a great job, and Karen, you brought up a lot of points that allowed me to think just more into the 5-8 model. But a few things that really have stuck out in the last few weeks, and that's why I did want to call this meeting, because before August 8th happens, I want us to all really, really deep down do a dive and think about what we're going to vote on. So we all received emails, we've spoken to our community members, you know, I have from all different schools, all different communities, I know people have reached out to me in, in the Board of Education emails, um, parents from all over, Stokes, Bellamy, Denty, and I am not getting a lot of support for the 5-8. I then go back to um, our the survey from the RTA that 75% of our teachers filled out um, and 80% came back to the five six. Um, I come from a you know large organizations, and I know that frontline staff do the work, and I understand administration as well because I am administration. But it's very important for us, not only for staff retention and to and to recruit staff, that we're listening to our teachers and our administrators. Um, I do, I have heard that there were many, many um, problems with the 5-6 standalone. And to your point, what you said, we have three years to make it okay. It makes no sense to me, no matter which way I spin it, that we're going to take a school at Strau that we've just renovated to make what it is, and maybe it still needs a cafeteria or anything else, and to put five, six up here and, and, and come down this hallway and our technology classes are on the bottom and we're gonna do different bell schedules maybe and then we're gonna do buses. I can't wrap myself around it. Now maybe, because I think Karen had some really good points with the model, that if we were building two brand new schools, then and you put five, six over here and you put seven, eight over here and you had something in the middle. But if you wanna talk about equity, I want everyone to really think about if you want your fifth grader to go to Strau up on the first or the second floor through a back hallway, or do you want your child to go to the brand new school? So think about when you talk about equity, what that looks like to you. Um, I don't care about that. I don't care what school my child goes I to. I got letter coming. Well, she asked the question. Oh, so I know, yeah. but I think it was oh, more it's rhetorical. rhetorical. It was a rhetorical question. So we, but everybody's going to have an opportunity. So it's um, going to be a chance to there's also lots of five, six models, and I think we can learn from them as well. Um, so I, you know, if I'm going to truly support and be up here as an elected board official, I do listen to Peter on what he says. He has a lot of great points. Um, this model had great points too, five and eight, but I have listened to the community as a whole, to our parents, to our teachers, to the administrators, even for myself, what's, what's inside of me saying that there's no way I can vote on a five, a five, eight. Uh, it just doesn't, to me, make good business sense from someone who's run an organization and from someone just in business in general. I mean, we could take the five, six and make it anything we want and then we have to sit down and listen what didn't work get you know karen miller what didn't work what can we do and what can we do to support this school to make it run you know as best as we need it to um you know i can i can go back and forth too and and from everything that someone has an idea i can go back and and have holes and and everything from five six you could go and five find holes in it and go back to the five eight so it's gonna come back to the one simple thing, the people that do the job every single day. 
the people that teach our kids, the people that we are, that are our neighbors, that we trust, they're telling us 80% of the 75% that filled it out are telling us that the five, six model is what's going to work. And to be honest, the emails that we got and the questions, I'm like, yeah, how do we do that? And I, and I think administratively, and I agree with Peter, a lot of the things that he said, and I think when you look at a different way of what administrators look at and teachers, and, and there, there are some different points. This isn't like a curriculum that's going in, or it's not like something, you know, uh, some paperwork that needs to have happen. This is the people and the people that we trust every day to teach our kids, and this is what's come back. So I just want to say, you know, as we talk about that, I want that in, in the back of people's of our head. I want it on and all of us that are elected members of this community. I want us to really dive in and think about that. Um, and I think Kelly, you made a good point about the equity part, which I wasn't really a fan of separating five, six either, but, you know, reading the emails, I'm seeing, you know, the advantages of it. And one huge advantage is one, five, six puts all the kids in the community, in one school, fifth grade up. There's nothing more equitable than that. Having two five eights, how are you going to make them even? How are you going to make them equitable? How are you going to make sure that the, the what's offered in Strau is the same as a brand new school? It's going to be very challenging in that aspect. So, from an equity standpoint, I think it's a it's a home run. You know, we clear the fifth and sixth graders out of the elementary schools, and now now they have a, now they have a new school, and every kid in in the whole city is under one roof, and we can really cater and and like you said, Joe you know, use that information and in, in, uh, between grades and sharing. And now instead of a teacher, a fifth grade teacher trying to talk to a fifth grade teacher down the street, they're in the same building. So I'm, I, th I think that just creates great opportunities for teacher and that, that collaboration between the, grade, between the different students in one single grade. Well, um, this is slightly off topic but I'm gonna say it now. So we as new board members obviously just came on. So I know not everyone has taken the training as recently as us, but I found this immensely helpful when I went back through and read the new boards on boarding handbook or whatever it's called. And the sections, how do school boards make decisions? And it says school board members are trustees responsible for a trust established with the community. When making decisions, the board should seek the advice where appropriate of administrators, teachers, employees, community members, and experts. Um, with this information, the board can act only legally during board meetings. Um, and then it just goes on to say, you know, the most important thing we're doing is looking at um, children's education, um, but that's where facts and data come in. So um, I just thought it was a good reminder about you know, we all have our own personal opinions, but we're here to act as trustees um, and use the data and what our stakeholders are telling us. Even if it came back to with our teachers in our community, even if it's 50-50, I mean, I would step back. I'm not an educator. Even if it was, I mean, even if it was anything remotely but what we've been hearing, even the emails that we're getting, and not there's there's not tons of emails. There there isn't. I thought there would honestly be a lot more. I don't think there's tons of emails, um, but the ones that we do get, you know, I'm taking a sample of what we're getting um, and what we're hearing, and I think that's that's really important for us to if take into consideration. You are, if you are looking at the emails, so um, I, I think a lot of the emails that we're getting. Um, from community members. And I, I, I don't know that a lot of them have really spent the time and effort that you really need to take the deep dive that you're requesting us to do into each and every factor that we've considered over the past uh, 18 to 24 months. I think that they're just coming at it from a perspective of, uh, you know, my first thought, my first gut instinct is it's an awful idea. I like the way that things are, make it work the way that things are now. And that's kind of the general tone of the community's emails. So when you say we should just do what the community is telling us, I, I have to, you know, I, I obviously respect what the community has to say, but I just don't know that they're coming at it from the from the viewpoint of being completely 
informed on the subject. You know, and, and we're trying, you know, we and we've done everything that we can to try to, to try to inform them as to why, you know, one model has this advantage or that advantage or, 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 or this disadvantage or that disadvantage. I think that, you know, instead of coming at it from from that standpoint, what, what kind of puts me off about some of these emails, it's basically, you know, you're a board member, we put you there, do what we say. That's not what that's not what we're here. We well, did that's not, not get a that's not what email. a representative democracy right. is for okay you know we send a person to congress because we entrust that person to kind of be in it every day on every issue and trying to get to the bottom of every issue and make informed votes right because the everyday community member is, it doesn't have the time uh nor the desire really to, to get into the nitty-gritty of things and so you have to trust the person that trust that the person that you put in that uh, elected position is going to take the time to to digest everything and then make an, an informed decision. Okay, so so from that standpoint, I get that you know there's a a, a lot of pressure to just say, okay, well, you know what, the community said do this, we're just going to do this. If that's the point, then you know I'm going to go home and just have dinner and, and enjoy my family because all I really have to do when it comes to to to, to, to board meetings is you know just okay i'm gonna put i'm gonna dip my finger in the water and hold it up yep. and you know where, whichever the way the wind blows okay that's the way i'm gonna vote but that's not how it works so I'm let's sorry. go around that's not, and that's say not how the many hours you spent at stroud last month each of us while the kids were there because that's what it goes back to me it it's going back to that i'm not there seeing transitions and who's doing what and where they're going but our teachers are and at Strau, and then we have other elementary school teachers that we had emails from, and then we had a collective email from the RTA. So if, and I agree with you with the community piece. I, I agree. I agree. Yeah. That's a great point. I think people are, it's an emotional decision. Right. I'm saying as a business decision, we just renovated Strau, the whole entire thing. It's beautiful. There's some things that still have to happen there why aren't we just going to you know do a brand new five six the way we need it to happen in order for our kids to be successful there because we just heard from peter with all due respect to the teachers okay there's another set of people another set of professionals whose eyes are looking at this as well okay and so when i when i kind of went towards the five eight model it's because the, these other professionals whose job it is to look at this from up here from a larger perspective. Whereas teachers, you're right, they're in the trenches, but that's all they're seeing is the trenches. They're not seeing what's happening up here from a larger level for the most part. Now, I'm sure that there's a lot of teachers that, that take the time to do that, but it's it's the administrator's jobs to do that and, and look at the district as a whole, okay? And we just heard from Peter saying that the five, six model was tried and unless we can, you know, and it, it, it did do well. I mean, it got to the point where we were on the watch list from SED, the, the, the kids were failing, the system was failing, that, that model was failing. So, I mean, to me, if you, you know, you're looking at the business uh, sense from a historical aspect, why would we go back to a model that failed in hopes that we're gonna, you know, we're gonna be able to fix it and fix all the problems that ailed it the last time. To but me, you know, that's the definition of insanity. Peter has said though, but Peter has said that- He are... said that he could make the K-6 model work. He yeah. can make the K five model. And Peter models. also said, said the best model was K or six eight, and we're not doing six no, eight. No, he said no. This the the K two three five. The, the, the best model, model is K two three five right. six eight. That's what he said. Right. Okay. <laughs> so if you want to talk about what he feels is the is the best model, that's the one that is absolutely at the bottom of everybody's list, right? Yeah. So <laughs> and not, not only Peter, so but, but we we paid experts. Well? Not and, and I you know I still like what you guys are seeing too with the five eight. But I also my second one the last time was the six eight. Can we just talk about that sure. for like a second? Um based on, you know, like I talked about the way the standards are and I know that they're gonna change. They're always gonna change and like in three or four years we're gonna get a new set of um standards, you know, curriculum standards and stuff. But can we just talk about six eight for a second and why not to is so if we did the new school say and Strau, why wouldn't would it work not work 
Is it too I much? We, I think we, because now we're back to a K-5 model, right? And I think everybody kind of went back and looked at the numbers and the numbers just didn't work out as okay. ideally as it's within the K-4 well, in terms of opening up space and the classroom size. That model to where we are now. Are you suggesting two 6A buildings? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think, um, so the number one thing that kind of dissuaded that conversation was the K-5 model requires a lot more focus on the elementaries to get the class sizes down. So your class sizes in a K-4 building will probably range anywhere from 18 to 20. In a K-5 building, you're probably looking more 21 or 23 class sizes. Again, not awful. But you can't guarantee that because we, we had this conversation, the more grade levels you put in a given building, depending on the population flow, you can see a huge influx of class sizes. So unless the building has, is big enough and has enough room to you know, expand out in terms of absorbing, maybe absorbing uh, more kids and saying, OK, now you two teachers that were teaching reading and math, we each had a classroom, we'll need you to share because we need to be able to have an extra classroom because some people moved in and we like to have a class size as well in an open section. Um, I think that, again, everything can work, gang. And I hate to keep going back to that because I know it doesn't help us move forward sometimes. But when you, if you look at what is the number one goal, if we're looking at trying to get elementary class sizes down and consistently down, K-4 is the fastest, least disruptive to, the, to, to that level of learning uh, that we will, we will be able to make that happen quickly. And also requires the, less, the least amount of construction on the buildings to get that implemented and moving forward. Two 6A buildings, if you're going to do a 6A, your choices are the annex which is a lot of work eating up some spaces drought or two six eight buildings does bring down to your point it brings down the overall building populations uh, of the middle school by we go from 800 per to 600 kids per building it would create two smaller middle schools i mean from the chart that ross Haber provided using bellamy turn denty gan stokes and joy as the six elementary the average class size is looking like 18, 19 with a few, like highest would be 25 every once in a while. At a K-5 model, K-4? K-5. I mean, I think we're all in a grants too, and Joan and I had spoken too last week. I, I love the case of the promote to know that um, in order to get, I mean, teachers and, and our students in order to, to be equitable in all of our schools to have these tiny classes you know 16 17 18 is just I mean, it's like oh my goodness that's amazing well, those are primary school numbers. yeah so yeah great right. i mean to have that that would be so it's just a really hard decision so i just want to make sure we're just talking about everything even though we've narrowed it down to kate Thing. 
like in high school. Mash. <laughs> No, I love that. Mash is the that. No, with the mash, the, 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 the TV show mash. Hilo, yeah. 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 So we, we did not have any discussion while we were down. So we're very careful about that. We want to make sure everybody's. Believe it or not, I can't operate a computer some days. <laughs> and right. some, some reporter was there to verify that. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> So um, what I was about to say is, is you know, what, what kind of uh, pushed me towards a, a five eight instead of a standalone five six is, you know, I I, I kind of um, you know devoured a lot of, of, of uh, academic studies as to which was the best model, right? Trying to identify uh, the one, um, and you know, no matter whether it's an older study or anything that that's happened recently. And by the way, if anybody wants to make a lot of money, you should probably engage this particular study. But anyway, um, uh, because there's no clear cut answer as to which model uh, is the best. I know that you know a lot of educators say that the K two three five six eight. I don't know. But one of the things that was a uh, was was a, a, a pattern in, in all of those studies that I read was, uh, and, and anybody can Google this and any amount of information will come up almost instantaneously, is that transitions, once you start adding in extra transitions, um, you're gonna see students struggle, especially as they progress forward. Um, and so, um, and, and that obviously was something that, you know, parents and, and, and teachers and, and administrators identified as well as, as one of the boxes that we needed to check was, you know, let's limit the number of transitions. Um, and that was one of the big arguments uh, for the K-6, right, was, was trying to limit that transition. And for the most part, you know, everyone was correct in terms of transitions. And I think it's almost universally accepted that the more you have, uh, the more it correlates to a decrease in student performance. So if you do have that separate standalone five six, you know you're talking about kids, you know, having that four year five year experience at the K four level, and then you're jumping into a, a, a five six, and just when you're getting comfortable, you got to jump back out of it, out of your comfort level, and then into another uh, two year model seven eight, and then just when you're getting comfortable there, you have to jump into a nine twelve or a, yeah nine twelve model. So. Just seems to me that the more time we, we can get kids in the same building with the same set of staff, um, with their eyes on these kids, and being able to track them and and you know identify strengths and weaknesses, um, and allowing them to develop that familiarity, and then not only developing that familiarity but keeping it for a, a, a number of years, I think that that for me was a was a big selling point for the model, right? So, um, you, know, it, you know, we talk about all the time how when we were doing all those construction projects, you know, we had some kids that, you know, they, they spent some time in their home schools and then they were at, uh, you know, Fort Stanwix and then they were, you know, being moved around during all these construction projects. And it was difficult on those kids. My kids went through that. So um, it's, it's, for me, something that's, that's really big. And, and one of the reasons why, you know, and I can see why I, I really, do you think that the, the point of having all the kids in the same building and same grade, grade level is a valid point? Uh, and that's a strong one in your favor, believe me. But, you know, again, we're getting to the point where, you know, these kids are just getting comfortable, just feeling like they belong in that building and then off to another one. Um, and, I, and, I, and I just don't, you know, in, in my heart, I don't think that that's something that I, I want to expose our kids to, right? And so, uh, with that, I, I'm going to put Karen on the spot a little bit here. <laughs> I know that you hate that, but I know that you're very well prepared. So <laughs> um, and just talk about some of, uh, you know, if we can go into some, uh, again, of some of the academic benefits that you envision and, and maybe how you perceive a classroom would look like or, or a student's experience would look like uh, going through the 5 8 model if it were implemented. So uh, before we start that, can sure. I just throw my comment in here? Mm -hmm. So I, I agree with you with the transition things. And I thought long and hard after our last meeting about transitions. And I think in my head, both models have a transition. One, there's gonna be a transition of the new bell, bell schedule within 5-8. And then the other one is the new bell, bell schedule plus the new building. So that's really where I'm seeing the difference. I also went back to the chart that Ross Haber did around all the four options and how they scored each of these 
I don't guiding principles and option three, which was K four five six, actually scored as strongly responsive compared to five eight for social emotional learning transitions that minimize disruption. So I know there's a lot of there is a lot out there about transitions, but I think the fact that they're getting in like an enclosed modified experience and not having the different bell schedules to like provide anxiety before they move up. I think being able to kind of house that and like get them truly ready, like Peter's saying about maybe fifth is like the light version, like more like elementary, continue that focus and then teamed up. And when they get to six, that's more of that prep for bell schedule. I think that can be done better in five, six. And just to point out, you know, Ross Haber also obviously scored it the same way. Well, as a person who was not even in favor of hiring Ross in the first place, I don't know how much credence I give that anyway. And plus there's there's certain variables and factors that we can say that I didn't agree with. But in any event, um, uh, I, I guess I, I don't understand why you wouldn't think that putting kids in a building that they're going to be in for four years wouldn't make them more comfortable than putting them in one building for two years and then putting them in a separate building for the, for the remainder uh, for, the, for the next two years. I think, you know, if, if we're going to do that transition piece, why not put them in a building, you know, when we're talking about buildings now, which, you know, again, I'm, I'm not, I don't really like to focus on the buildings. I want to focus on, on the academics and how they're going to improve uh, the student performance here because ultimately I have to do the whole purpose of this revisioning is to do that, right? Is to, is to try to produce a more well rounded um, a student who's performing better academically, socially, uh, you know, athletically. Um, you know, that's, that's our goal here. So, um, I mean, you can say too, one of the things that when we had Strow and Staley back a long time ago, mm -hmm. you know, if I don't know, you went to Strow. No, I went to Strow. 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 You know, and, and Strow, one of the things was when we came together in high school, that was another piece that we hadn't been together that time, which made it, you know. I it, thought it was pretty exciting. So. You know, well, I'm sure that, you it was did. something something that you know we look forward to actually because now we're like, hey, you know, we're gonna be meeting a whole new group of people that uh, that that um, you know, I, frankly, I, I don't. If if you talk to a person that went through that experience at that time, I, I don't think I think to a person, everyone was pretty excited about getting to the high school level. Or and, and 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 a major part of that was because you're going to be meeting some people at that point. And at that point, I think you know you're at an age where you're you're comfortable. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, the high school years are difficult, but I think that that you develop that comfort in, in trying to meet new people and, and, and getting involved with new experiences at that point. Which I, I agree so, with, but I, I also I remember you know coming out of Columbus being so excited going to Staley and then feeling that same excitement going to, to RFA. And I don't know how much everything has changed thus far, but like the transition wasn't an issue for me. I mean, I was, I was looking forward and, and yes, I was excited to meet new people and all of that stuff, but just being able to move out of that building and go, I just, I don't know. I just felt more grown up. I'm just, I don't know. And I, I think there's a lot of, to be said about that. I mean, we're taking our elementary schools and in fifth grade, putting them together. So, you know, they get to learn and grow together in fifth and sixth and seventh and eighth. The only thing that's really transitioning, obviously, I know are, are the teachers, but at least they're together at that point. Well, and Joe, and I'm, I obviously know you are not on the eighth going to be voting five, six in any way. Okay. I, well, I, I, I get that. I, I um, I, you know, we're at the other side. You can if you can, if you can you get know. me off of the, the points that I'm making, which I, I know, I don't know how you get me off that transition. Piece, you know, again, you know, and and I feel and, like and, it, and, and it's the fifth. I'm sorry, Lynn, but no, one, more, one more I'm sorry. So I don't imagine the fifth, sixth building being one where you know um, all the kids or are, are going to be like in a general population, and you know every year they're going to be experienced. I, I more envisioned it the way that it was, like, you know, you're going to be given the house, right? Or, or some sort of a pattern. You're saying a standalone five, six? You're, yeah, mm -hmm. you're going to be in, you're going to be within that 
small group of, of kids, right? I mean, you're talking about trying to make it manageable. I think that's the way to do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I could be wrong. Teachers and Peter can talk to me about that. But the way that it was structured was, you know, my, my daughter when she, and my son when they got to, the, to that five, six school, because um, they both went through it. And Did they end, run it a was not, schedule? It was not a great experience, okay? Which is another reason why I'm out in five, six, because I actually experienced it. It wasn't great. Um, so, uh, but, but they were in, within their own house, right? Or, or I don't know what that is. Yeah, they, they were like, it. yeah, the tail was like a white knight or right. they, gave, they, gave, they gave a color. They didn't have they ran, separate bows. No, no they, they ran, they ran they period by period without them. Yeah. So it was kind of like a hybrid. Mm -hmm. Personally, I like to see the high school run without bells. We don't have bells in our real world life. We're not preparing kids to operate as adults when you bring a bell to one of them. Mm -hmm. I think it should be tried, but <laughs> everyone thinks I'm crazy to begin with, which is true. I need a bell. I need a bell. <laughs> it's time to go. <laughs> so I just wanted to talk really quick about the transition piece. I think nobody wants to hear COVID anymore, but I think that the way that we all grew up, we can't even remotely um, put ourselves in the positions of the kids now, because when we're talking about transition, you can't even get kids to go to a movie or to the mall. They don't want to do anything. They literally want to sit at home, be on games or talk to their, they'll be in a room and they talk to each other via text message. It's a new wave of kids to try and tell them that they're going to do, you know, the K-4 model I love because then everybody gets to know every kid, all the staff, they all become close. And then they move to this also to this 5A, all the staff get to know the kids. The only way that teachers can teach kids and it really sinks in is that they have a relationship with them. It doesn't mean that they have to directly be in their class, but that could be seeing them every day in the hall on the way to the nurse's office for their shots or seeing them in the hall for, I mean, a bathroom break and they're a hall monitor for that period, whatever it is. Um, the only way that kids are going to keep wanting to come to school is by having relationships. If you're taking away and only allowing them to be there two years and then two more years, you're taking away an opportunity for a relationship for the child that really might need it. Probably not all of you know, our children, our kids are probably very well-rounded and our kids' friends but that's not our whole community. And I think it's important that we remember that. But you're gonna be upstairs at five, six, and then you're gonna go downstairs with a new set of relationships. It doesn't matter, seven, the, staff will, the staff makes their way around. The well, staff is very good. This is why I wanted to, Karen, kind of speak to that piece a little bit, so switch and then maybe envision what the, the, the experience would be you know, from fifth straight through eight. So are you ready to speak on that, Jim? As best I can. <laughs> um, to me, and I've been listening, it, it really comes down um, to management. And I, I just see um, 200, 200, 200, 200 is much easier than 400 and 400. Okay, and I'll, I'll kind of briefly, I'll try to elaborate. So um, I took, um, well, I'll throw this out first. If we have, and I, I got this from our data from uh, the kids' reading levels. Right now, our fifth graders, we have 104 students, and that's just, this is just reading at grade 3.0 to 3.9. Now, that's just that great, it's just that level. There's, there's a lot more reading under that, but I'm, that probably would include some of the special education students. So I just picked that's two grade below. So we've got 100 students. We're going to put them in with the, the other 300. And now we've got 100 students we have to worry about how are we going to get that intervention piece to them? Now, if we split that into 50 and 50, to me, they're just a lot easier to manage. And the numbers are pretty much the same for sixth grade. And they're going into seventh grade next year. And we have, so we've got those 100 kids going into seventh grade now, and you're going to hear the same story. They're not ready. Okay. But if we have them five, six, seven, eight, and I kind of, and I know this can change, but I'll just show one vision. If we have, um, Fifth paired with six, and they they have let's say uh, let's say class size of twenty four. So we have those two teachers or, or four teachers will share those forty eight kids, All right? So they can move from fifth grade to sixth grade. Get to know when they go to seventh. If we're still doing looping, they can be assigned to a looping team. So those four teachers know which team those kids are going to go to, 
and there could be a lot of communication. And one of the teachers in one of the emails mentioned there is a, one that she saw one of the positives was the opportunity for vertical planning. I, I can't see how we can say anything otherwise. They're, especially if they're paired up and you know, there's things to work out. And I, can, I remember when, I know we talk about the bell schedule, but sixth grade was at Stroud one point and they kind of ran, we had the bell schedule, but they kind of ran their own schedule. They didn't even, the bells rang and the kids, if it wasn't time for them to change a class, they didn't change a class. I think that's all things I think that can be, can be worked out. But um, again, a point with the management, I know Anna mentioned COVID, but we have a lot of kids with, um, if we have mental health, I'll, I'll, I'll say it, the, this is the term in education in social work, um, the advents, the adverse childhood experiences, they're called the ACEs. And I think we're seeing more and more kids having ACEs, okay? And if we have the social worker that's got, you know, let's say she's assigned to fifth grade, she's got those 200 kids, any of the kids, there's just more, again, the management comes in. She can, she can be with those kids all the way through to eighth grade. There's no transition. She's not, she's not going to talk to the transition person over at Strau. It, she can work with them, build that relationship, try to connect with community schools, all the services that they might need. It just, to me, the management, the numbers are smaller, um, tracking attendance, um, all the things. I, I got the analogy when I was coming here. I don't know if it's a good analogy or not, because um, when I had to help my daughter plan for her wedding. So, were we going to do a big 300 person wedding? Please no, <laughs> or a 100 person wedding. And it was just going to be easier to manage all the logistics, the smaller the numbers. So that's just, um, I do, that's kind of where I was going. Yeah. Okay. I, I see lots of different ways how it, I think it could work with the, the pairing of the teachers, which I think could be critical. Um, when you know you have kids coming in that are where the reading levels are, maybe be creative and you have a non-graded class for them where they might get a double block of ELA, they might get a double block of math, whatever they might might need. I just think it's easy to manage that with the smaller numbers. Peter, what's so, our staff retention? Uh, staff retention? Yeah, do you have do you have any of that in maybe you don't know office? Easily in the 90s. And I, I don't know if you noticed um, just as you were coming on board just before you came on board, we we employed a a firm who is actively engaged in analyzing uh, retention for us and uh, distributed surveys. Not only are they going to analyze the data there, but they're going to come in and, and help us try to figure out how to address the issues that have been raised and, and offer some insight as to how we can help with our staff. So we, we we actually have an outside service that's helping us with that. Who is it? So I want to okay. jump in to Karen's point and pardon my ignorance. So. Obviously, I was K K five. That was my thing, and I felt like with K four, it is the ultimate early intervention, right? Because we're going to have the lowest class sizes. So I know we're talking about numbers from today, and my heart bleeds for all kids that are in today's, you know, world living this. But I'm also trying to think about right. We have three years to design this. So in three years, if we're moving to a K-4, my head is telling me we should be pushing that way before five, six. Well, I'm not saying that, I, I should have clarified that. That's a given. Um, that program's, we're, that's been our focus. We have to work on early literacy. I, I'm not trying to say that we're not going to be, we're not providing interventions. Our, we're showing growth. I'm just saying that we're going to still need to continue working on that. And I just think we can't just say, okay, that fourth grade, our interventions need to stop and we don't right. have to be. So no, no, I, I'm not saying that we that we want early intervention. I'm not saying that at all. Okay. So I should have started at the... And, you know, the, and the other thing... Continue the work that is identified. So I, I get the being in the building and being able to team and stuff, but I also, in my personal world, I work at a remote company we service clients and I have never met a single one of my teammates and yet we continue to win business because we live in the in the now and I don't think you need to be in the same building to do that vertical planning right like you can be on a team of teachers right like five and six like you're aligned to this team at Strauss so if you're a white knight at five six you're a white knight when you hit Strauss so 
to me, I'm not understanding like why it doesn't happen, it's not, happen today, it, but we it, have three it, years, it, right? Historically, I am. I did not have work on teachers' plates to find time for them to be able to do that. It's just not gonna happen. With I, all the other things that come down the pipe that they have to worry about and work on, it's just, especially when you're seven, eight, you're five, six, are gonna be completely different facilities, trying to get them together with different times. It's, it's very, very complicated. I mean, I know we're going to have different points on that, so we can go back and forth yeah. all day long. And those of you that are dead on the 5-8, and there's there's some of us that are not, obviously. I just cannot, for the life of me, imagine a fifth grader with an eighth grader. I, and I don't care if you think you're going to separate it. And my daughter just left Stroud. So did Danielle. And within the first week or the second week of coming back to school, I mean, there's fights and different things that are going on. And the problems of today are different than we went to school. So, I mean, we have all of that to contend with too in junior highs every day. And I'm sure at the high school too. I mean, it is. Well, it's why you don't want 400 of each yeah, grade level together. And we're, and we're not, uh, you know. I think. I, I, I don't know that, that, that we uh, as a board kind of came up with a unique model here yeah. that's never been tried or tested in any district ever. ever. I mean, you know, five eight is a pretty routine uh, or or common model that's implemented throughout the country. In and many school districts that are smaller. Yeah, I understand. But the, the kids ultimately are kids. No, okay. Smaller school districts have to have different problems than we do. I, I understand, but they're still ten year old kids. Okay, and if With, you're going to take that ten year old kid and move them around to a different uh, school or a different area they're still going to be a 10 year old kid they're going to and be so i mean so so you, you you know we can't but we can't just discount and say oh well that's just camden they're rural or that's just clinton they're 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 a smaller district they're still fifth and eighth graders they've done the kind of the model and 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 from the people that i've talked to in, in in those schools there's no issues whatsoever and they're riding the same buses they're they're in the same gym classes they're eating lunch at the same time so town of web has K to 12, Joe. Let's follow their their but, but what I'm saying it's is, all is, 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 how is big right. you are. so so it's all once different. once the kids are familiar with the model, I think that they'll become more comfortable with it. Right now it's just kind of a foreign thing. And I think that 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 you know the more we are stressed about it, the more that kind of uh, is picked up by the kids. You know, I think if we if we approach it from a positive aspect, and again, we're trying to develop we're trying. In, in developing this model, and uh, uh, we try to address the concern that fifth and eighth graders don't belong together. And again, it's not going to be 100%. But, uh, and, and, and I don't even know that it's entirely necessary. Like I said, once this once this model's in place, uh, I'm sure that somewhere along the line, there was there was a parent that said, there's no way that I want my, my, my child who was just in sixth grade in a class with uh, uh, in seventh grade with a ninth grader who is so mature physically and so much older and could do all kinds of damage to my seventh grader, but somehow it worked at Stroud and Stale, right? I mean, I, I, I I'm, I'm not exactly, and, and it was just all because the community developed a familiar familiarity with it, saw that it wasn't Armageddon, and you know it, it worked. So you know, I, I guess. You know, we're just going to have to agree to disagree on this on this particular point as far as fifth graders being in the same building as an eighth grader. You know, um, but I think that we've taken steps here to try to address a lot of the concerns as far as busing goes and as far as uh, interaction goes within the building. And we still have three more years to work it out. Um, I'm again. I I I know you keep saying what you know. Let's, we're going to go the way that we want to go. I don't know what's going to happen on the eighth, but the fact of the matter is, is part of the reason why I uh, kind of wanted, I, I like this forum, and I'm glad that there's people that are listening in, um, and, and 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 trying to develop an opinion on this, is is that you know, I want you guys to realize that we have spent a lot of time thinking about it, we've listened to a lot of the concerns that you that you brought up, and we're trying to check off as many boxes as we can with this, in an effort to improve student performance and ultimately that's why i favor this model the transitions lead to a decrease in performance it's it's without a doubt it happens uh, you look at every study that's ever looked at any great configuration and it'll tell you the more you increase the transitions the greater uh, the decrease in in performance 
And you know, we're trying to develop models here where kids have uh, the same set of eyes on them for a longer period of time and developing relationships, which is going to lead to a decrease in behavior. And we talked about that, right? I mean, the more familiar that you are with a kid, I think the, the less likely they are to act out and, and misbehave. So you're developing that relationship uh, on a social level. Uh, on the academic level, you're able to identify their strengths and weaknesses and work on them uh, in a very small groups. And, you know, so... So we're not just doing this because we want to torture parents who are terrified of having fifth graders with eighth graders. We're doing this because in my heart of hearts, I believe that the academic performance is going to be there and it's going to, and it's going to be reflected you know, down the road once this model is implemented and that we're going to be producing a better student at the end of the day. And, that's, and on, that's the other, just, that's my on the other end of it, um, because you are the board president, so your forum, you get to say a lot about the model that you want, which is five to eight. That's not true. I mean, I eight think I provided everybody an opportunity. So to... let me just say on the other side of five, six, yeah. one, when we talk about equity and we talk about, okay, so now our, our schools are going to be K to four, we're going to have 15 or 16, 17, 18 kids in a class. Wow, that's amazing, right? To be able to do great things with that. We have a new RFA, we just renovated Stroud. Why would we not take a school that we can build to spec anything we want it to be and build it amazing and have all these new buildings instead of having Stroud that is gonna have a fifth and sixth up top through a back stairwell Hopefully, what do they do when they go to the nurse or the nurse is going to be in a science class upstairs? I'm not sure. I know we have three years to figure it out if it goes through, but those are some of my concerns. I probably would think more about it if we could build two brand new schools, but to take a school we just renovated. And then my second thing is, and then I'll say it again, our teachers and our administrators did a survey and they are the ones that are saying, this is what we believe. So if you want to take the community out of it, that's fine in some of the emails. But I trust the people that are teaching our kids every day, our neighbors, our family members. And when any organization, I don't care if you're the Rome City School District or Pepsi, you listen to the people who do the job every single day. And if you want to count up the hours between all of us that have been in Strau in the last month, it's very minimal and it's very difficult for me to move forward and say, I'm going to go against the teachers when that's what they do every day. And okay. so let's talk about a teacher that took the time to actually write and in, in, in favor of the five day. Well, just like the community member. I mean, I'm not going to name email, her. I don't want to name this person. You'd have okay. to, you'd but have what to I'm just saying is, 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 is you're making it sound like, like, like there's. Like, Joe, like, the like, one teacher said she would do it if you could get her class sizes down to 15, 16. Because at Stroud, I'll tell you, my daughter was in a math class that had, I think, 30. That That's not what she was talking well, about. Class sizes in the middle school, to be right. honest, are because of the team. So in order to get class sizes down to the middle school, you got to destroy the teaming model. Because the teaming model drives up certain class sizes over. So they, will, they do fluctuate from 30 down to 18, 20. All I'm and saying then, is that not, this one I just want to make sure people understand the why 15, that happens 15. at the middle school. And I'm not, if we want to continue that model, which is very successful, and I think that the middle school teachers would agree that they would prefer higher class sizes and team. Well, than, we're going to listen to no about that. Class sizes, so. Let's keep on listening. That's what I'm saying, you know. Um, I think, Peter, you emailed me earlier in the, in the entire board um, that you had some responses from the administrators. I know Joe mentioned it earlier that we can't just listen to the community. We can't just listen to the teachers. We also, there's also a group of administrators. So I know we've heard from you, but what was that feedback that you got on, on this proposed plan of K through four, five uh, through eight? Very mixed bag. The, nobody really supports... Um, much of anything that's being talked about, they all support something completely different than what's being talked about. K two three five. Uh, anybody that's above the principalship supports K two three five. That sees the biggest picture, they support that. Uh, elementary principals seem to support K five model with a totally separate sixth grade building by themselves, totally by themselves. Um, there is an administrator that proposed a model uh, that's. Uh, I wish it, someone would have mentioned it years ago because it. It may be ultimately what I would say could be one of the best ones of all the different ones 
I'm going to mention it because it took time to write it, but that was uh, K-6, standalone seventh grade academy, 8, 9, 10, 12, which is pretty unique when you think about the continuum of what it talks about, certainly not doable with K-6, but the model itself has, I think, a lot of merit in terms of kids' growth. Uh, and then you had the, um, uh, a couple of people did mention that the K-4, 5, 6, uh, seven, eight would be okay. And there are a mix. It, it came down to some people said they could handle the two five eights if that was the direction I go. Nobody really supported a straight up K6 kind of model we talked about before. Nobody really had a good solution. There was no definitive, like we all think that this is the best model. It was pretty much, again, people that saw the biggest picture felt K235 or K236 elementary principles that did respond were in favor of K-5, sixth grade by themselves, totally by themselves, seven, eight. And, uh, and because one of them took the time to write a pretty detailed description, I will say that they referenced the fact that when Stroud was under renovation, we did have the seventh graders separated by themselves mm -hmm. for two years. And they seemed to do pretty okay with that and that management load of that one building of just the one grade level was was pretty good. That's I know an interesting. I know it's a monkey wrench because we haven't talked about it, but I yeah. did say that I would get their feedback and provide it. Well, I, what are your thoughts on that? that? That is an interesting concept, either either sixth grade or seventh grade. You know, I mean, I think you if you go back ultimately to way early on, we talked about a sixth grade annex at Stroud, which is exactly all that is. It's just that you put your facility is right there at Stroud. But the problem is that K five seven. It's still it's it makes it more challenging at the elementary level to fit within the facilities and get your class sizes down. And we're not talking major league large class sizes, but I'm not I'm not opposed to the sixth grade annex. I think I talked about that many, many months ago when we first got off the K235, I, I believe. Uh, but I will tell you, if you're gonna do a sixth grade. If you're not going to put the sixth graders alone on their own on their island of some kind, whether it be an annex that's segregated from the seven eight or in their own building, and you're going to try to integrate them to six eight, I would tell you go five eight. It's just one the six eight thing by itself. If you're going to integrate them all, it's just not. You might as well add the fifth grade so your fifth and sixth graders can team together. You got similar certification areas; they can work that out. And then your seventh and eighth graders can, and you have that four year continuum. And that feedback was from this week, or? Uh, from the past week, yeah. I would say, I think we had eight administrators out of 30 or so responded. And can you just define administrator to me? Is that principals and? Principals, directors, assistant principals. I actually had someone come to me with the idea of a K-5 and putting the sixth grade annex or academy at Denti because of proximity. Like, oh, I love this. I know we're K-4. <laughs> All right. Well, does uh, anybody else have any questions? I, I want to kind of dive into some of the some of the questions that the public had and some other things that teachers and whatnot. So I just need to take second. You want to take a break. five minute break and we'll dive into those? Sure. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs>
Oh, yeah. right. we're, we're, we're back in the chat. All right. So, no, I, I think uh, everyone <laughs> sitting at this table kind of makes a sense of where they're going with this um, when it comes up to the vote for the next meeting. Um, but as, as a way of, you know, trying to be a bit more transparent, well, I don't know. I don't know that we really need to be. More transparent is it's very transparent in this but in additional transparency um there have been some uh, people that have sort of this with some questions and i just wanted to um you know board members and actually more specifically mr blake the opportunity to answer some of those questions so i'm just going to go through them very quickly and then we'll call it a night okay selling plan yeah all right let's go through just So this person, and again, I'm not going to mention any names from the emails, just I'm not meeting some teachers. <laughs> yeah. um, this person wanted to know if there was an example of 5A monthly, and I think we did mention the uh, Camden button, I think, or two 5 -8s. Um, This person wanted to know if there'd be a playground at the new school. I would think so. Okay. At both You'd have schools? to add one at Stroud. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how would busing issues, lack of drivers, be handled if what all grades ride together? I think we had talked about that a little bit, um, but they would not. Um, and then can you just talk about, I think there was another person that submitted a question about busing as well, so maybe you can handle that. In both those questions. Yeah, I don't, you're still transporting the same number of kids at the same times. So I don't see that that would be a different, a different scenario, but I'm not the transportation director, I don't do the routing, so that would be responsible for them to work with what we got. All right. I don't see that being an issue. Um, is it, would there be a noise issue in terms of disruption of, of, of we had different arrival and departure times in the 5 8 You could. I mean, it's, there could be. I don't know that it would be. Again, it's all dependent upon tolerability of how you do that and where you bring buses in and stage them and, and those types of things. Uh, just want to know if the same class classes would be offered at both schools, clubs, and can kids from the same grade go to other school for an after school club? I guess those are probably details that we'd have to iron out, right? I don't see why you wouldn't offer them the same, but I think the last question is probably the most important with that. If you have, and that could be a real thing, if you've got two 5 8 schools that you may not have the same clubs because you may not have teachers within the two buildings willing to be advisors for those clubs. So if one building had a club that the other didn't, I won't see any reason why we wouldn't have kids go or be allowed to go to the other building to participate in the club. Will the classes for five, six be departmentalized? For example, one teacher for only one math teacher, or will it be the same as elementary school or have same teacher. That's right. I don't, I don't think we have an answer for that. I think that's a conversation with the teachers association and the administrative association after the models have developed to determine what that will look like. And then the last question was about security. Uh, in what sense? I mean, they would probably look the same as they would at the middle school right now. You'd probably have to increase the SROs a little bit. So we did have more SRO presence. Uh, than SSO presence. So overall, we'd have more police presence than we currently have. In terms of general security, um, as we know, there's there's just a lack of people looking to do those jobs. So you probably would not have in-house district security, but you'd have the police presence. Okay. All right, this is another email. Um, would the 258 be split by elementary? And I think what the question is, is um, would there be um, schools paired, elementary schools paired to um, the separate five eights if we want that? Again, that's a question for down the road if that decision's made, but I think the last meeting, everyone spoke about that and kind of felt that it would be kind of like a three schools funnel to one middle school and three others funnel to the other. If I remember, that's kind of, I think, the flavor that you all were more in favor of if that were the model that wound up being the end game. Uh, next question was: Would we would be adding would we be adding two additional middle school teams? Right now, there are three seventh and three eighth grade teams, um, so that would be difficult to split. So, 
again, that's a conversation with the administrators and the, the teachers once the model is chosen, how, what do you need to pull it off? What's the best optimum staffing to pull off the model? So that could be a thing where you add teams, okay. uh, which will reduce class sizes at seven, eight. And then there was some question about um, separate administration for the five, six versus the seven. How would that look? Again, same answer for most of them. It all mm -hmm. that's to be determined with the association. So you have two options. You could do if you did a five eight building, you could have a five six principal and a seven eight principal, two separate principals on the same campus, and maybe split an assistant principal. Maybe not, depending on the population. Or you could do a building or campus principal responsible for all five eight and do an assistant principal assigned to five six, assistant principal assigned to seven eight. It really again is a conversation of what model do you think is going to work the best personally i would recommend that you probably have and you'll still have 800 kids in the general campus building so i would probably recommend no less than three administrators per site obviously social workers counselors you're going to want to have as much support staff as you can to surround those kids you know joe the one thing i, I I do want to point out is that you know the answers are we'll talk to the administrators we'll you know we'll talk to our teams and it's almost like okay here's the model that you guys don't choose here you go tell us what you can do to make it work and that's where you know that's think, what i just want to well i don't know if that's about. necessarily true i mean we're gonna if we went with the model that you're suggesting we have to figure out a way to make it work because but we have because it didn't the last we've thing. had we'll <laughs> have people on board at least that will say okay we're, we want to make it work this is the, what we've all chosen yeah. together I, I i disagree i think if we choose a model i don't know that the, the rta or, or the administrator is going to be hostile towards that model i think at that point just like the board and just like the community we're going to try to figure out a way to make it work i don't know that there's going to be people that are going to try to scuttle it i don't think it hostile is going to work well wow, but i but, but what i'm saying is is while they may not like ultimately the model at the <coughs> onset you know, um, and they might be pleasantly surprised after the fact but that being said, I think that once we agree on how this is going to look, I think everybody's going to be on board with, uh, you know, doing the best we can to make it the best uh, five six standalone or five eight two school or two middle school model. And and I think that, um, you know, I, I have a lot of faith in our community that we're going to come together and that includes the teachers and administrators and, and parents. Maybe I'll be naive, but. Can I, I just want to say one thing too. <clears throat> when I was at City Hall many moons ago, there were changes implemented that people were against doing. Once they were implemented, implemented they loved it. So until you get into it, you're not going to know. You know, people do not like change. And that's probably didn't like the nine to 12 <clears throat> high school when we when I first came about too. And I think now they've gotten used to it and then are okay with it. So. I totally agree with that, but also we've all watched Undercover Boss. Right? You you go in, you see your frontline staff, and you see who's what's happening. So I think there's two ways uh, to look at that. Well, I yeah. think they are saying that they're good with change, and just from both sides. Like, I mean, we know that everyone's comfortable with K six. It's it's what Rome was raised on, but we have people ready to change to a K four. They're just saying that they would prefer the change be five six seven eight versus five seven eight That's so and, 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 and yeah being completely honest if we had the buildings to support it i wanted to keep it a k6 i wouldn't want to change it either um but you know circumstances have, have arisen that yeah now require us to, to, to address the problem i mean i'm happy we're just down to two two models i mean to, honestly to, to move forward yeah. for our community for our teachers yeah. for all of us moving down to two models is a is a big you know it's it's we should be excited about well, it had to happen eventually right? yeah. we, could, eventually. we couldn't continue to you know bat this around indefinitely i mean you know we have to come up with some sort of a plan for our kids right so uh let's some of the questions that are in this one were answered already i believe talks about sharing information i think we probably can address that we need to support that to change guys
So I'm going to go a little bit off of paper here a little bit. Um, instead of, Chris, you, you kind of, I know we're not really going to take a movie uh, comment, but you know, you're sitting here and you sent it a pretty extensive email. We know the positions. Is there anything that you raise in your email that you don't think that we addressed here today? Um, wow, how long do I have? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, uh, there's a lot, and I know that the purpose of this was really so that, you know, you guys could, um, kind of sort through some things, and actually, as everyone was talking, I was kind of taking some notes for my, you know, August State board speech. Um, to me, I think what really resonated with me was one thing that Kelly said, and that was when she said, let's go around the table and everybody say how long you spent in Strau in the last month. And she said it twice, and it was crickets both times. And I'm going to guess the reason it was crickets is because you haven't. And that's not to say, oh, well, you haven't been there with that, with a negative intonation. It's to say, you just haven't, you haven't had the time, you don't live it, you don't have a reason to be there, whatever it is. Bottom line is, in probably the biggest thing that we're learning in education and the reason why there's a teacher shortage and the reason why we're fortunate that hasn't really hit us hard here. I went to AFT in Boston, the national convention two weeks ago and spoke to educators from around the country and we're in real trouble. And I shared with you that report, that AFT report. And one of the key things they talked about was kids need relationships with their teachers to be successful. That's the number one correlational factor across all research. It doesn't matter what study you look at. Teacher relationships to students. The impact of teacher relationships based on teacher morale and voice. Voice of the teachers. You know exactly where we stand as the voice of the teachers. So what you have to ask yourself is, which is the voice that at the end of the day, we should listen to? The people who do it every single day. The people we trust to do it every single day without sitting on their shoulder because we put that much trust and faith that they're gonna keep our kids safe and make them successful. Who should be the ones whose feelings, thoughts are weighed the heaviest? I guess that's what it comes down to. I mean, obviously, you know my position. We're the ones that do it every day. You don't. You just don't. And that's not a negative. You have a certain job and role. And part of your role is to oversee what we do. But when we say this is what we need and we have great ideas to make it work, you should be listening to us. We have all kinds of great ideas about the transitioning with the five, six, and the seven, eight for sister schools, which Ross Haber was all about. And I don't see why three grade levels together is not a transition issue, but we're all we're okay with K2 and three, five, sister school, whatever, but we can't say five, six, and seven, eight right next to each other with all kinds of effective ways that we can make that work. And I don't think we can live in the past with stale. I really don't. There's a lot of reasons, <clears throat> excuse me, that that model didn't work. And all those reasons are corrected. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> it's, we've made our, our viewpoint very clear. And it's quite frustrating, honestly, that, um, that that isn't something, I'm not saying it's not being considered, but at the end of the day, if this is what your people are telling you, I have a very hard time with the fact that it's going to be not supported. I'm not saying disregarded, not saying that you're disregarding it, but you're you're not supporting what we're telling you. That's that's at the at the end of the day, that's what it comes down to for me and for our members. And that's hard. So thank you. Joe, is there can I mean can and Tracy speak just to. I, I, did, I really didn't want to. I mean, I, I'm I, sorry. I, I had I had Chris's email here. She she was okay, one of the emails. And I apologize. And, and, and I wanted to. 
No, no, I understand. I'm very passionate. No, I didn't want to go down point by point and ask you're questions. You're going by email. I just, I just figured. Okay. Yeah. yeah Thank so. you. I mean, everybody's obviously going to have an opportunity to speak at the meeting on August 8th. And if mm -hmm. they want to copy it before then, they get to. So, uh, but with that, uh, is there anything else that we want to discuss tonight? Can I just add, there was one thing in um, the RTA vice president's email that I was hoping just to get some more information from you, Peter, on. And it was around, I believe, Strau and the negative behaviors and discipline. Sorry, let me just, I want to make sure I'm not missing anything from the paragraph. So it's around keeping students apart in bathrooms, hallways, and trying to provide instruction. And it talks about the ne negative behaviors that we're seeing um, to include hall walking, vaping, and other activities going on in the bathroom. And it talks about actually having the data to see how much it, how looked at the data from the past year and how many write-ups have occurred in respect to those activities. So I didn't know if you had a chance to, to kind of look at that or provide us any guidance of you're not going to be able to get that in. It doesn't pull that way in the school tool. Okay. But I don't, I don't, I would say that's an anecdotal claim on their behalf. I think that Tracy and his team did a pretty outstanding job from about January to February on it at diminishing that. And I don't recall, I won't speak for Tracy. Tracy can follow up if he wants to, we all, but I, I don't recall that being an issue for the second or for the second half of the year at all. It is him and his team did a great job of pretty much trying to bring storm and troubleshoot how to improve some of that behavior and behavior. And to my knowledge, they were very successful at doing it. Okay. Joe, I just have one last thing. Uh, the one thing that Chris said really resonated too about transitions. We're saying on one end, academically and you know everybody's first thing, Karen, John, Peter, in, in a lot of administrators is the, the um, and I don't want to call it the banding model, but the K2, 3, 5, da, 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 da. if that's the best and that's transition, that that's the most transition. Wasn't the best for me. But. I wouldn't have voted for it. Right. But, <laughs> but, but if for we're that very saying reason. <laughs> that that's the best academically and that is the most transition, I mean, it's, it's hard for me to wrap myself around that too, that, okay, this is the best academically, but then there's the transition. It's kind of, you know, I think we talked about most important things like check the boxes, equity, small class sizes, transitions, that's one of them too. I mean, that's what I was gonna say when I was talking and you were talking that if we had, if we had the whole community behind the banding, those transitions would have been fine with all of us, and then you know, because that was the best boxes. thing for the kids. I mean, I still think that's the best thing, but we know that's not going to happen. But I mean, so when we talk about the trans, it's the same amount with the five, six. Well, we heard from the committee, that's not what they wanted. So, I mean, you know, to say that we're not listening, to, yeah, there are certain aspects of, of, of the community and there's certain aspects of what the teachers are saying that we have listened to, right? And, I, and, I, and she did, and Chris mentioned relationships. Again, I, I, I find it, I, I just don't understand how you can say that you can't build a better relationship when you have a kid in the building for four years than you could by having a kid in the building for two years. I know that I'm not a teacher, I'm not there every day, but the fact of the matter is, is, is the more time you have with a kid in your building, the more you're going to know that kid. And, and, to, and, and just when you're just getting to know that person to, 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 to say, okay, now we're going to ship you off to another school, I just... To me, it, I, I, it doesn't connect. Logically, it doesn't make sense. Because you're saying, you know, that you'll have the same, are you going to have the same, in your model, you're going to have the same counselor. You're going to have the same principal. You're going to have the same for the four years. Yeah. Well, we heard Karen and, uh, on how she envisioned it, right? I mean, it's going to be the same four uh, 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 groups of eyes or, 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 or that are going to- The problem is that five, six is the elementary level though. But, so the, it, but the support staff is the only group of people whose certificates transcend all grade levels. So you would have the same counselor for four years, the same social worker, the same- Same principal. Same principal, same reading teacher, same math teacher. Those specialty type places would be the constants that would carry through. He's still going to have a different teacher every year, right? That you're going to have to worry about. But you will have your, I, I guess what you would say, your most critical staff on social emotional support would be consistent 
throughout that grade span. You previously said though that the less, and I'm sorry, I don't think the less grades a principal has to have under their belt, the better, right? For the building, the overall building principle, it's is well, yes and no. It's the same number of kids. You're still talking about, you know, Tracy's responsible for 800 kids. He'd be responsible for 800 kids, just different, a larger grade level. So if you had two assistant principals to go along with that, it'd be very manageable. And would your assistants, assistant principals, be aligned to five, six, seven, eight? Like how do you, I guess that would leave that up to them to discuss like in the high school, they carry through with the kids. So you might want to do that same thing. You might want to have one principal assistant principal to follow the kids through. You might want to have more than two assistant principals. You might want to go to a high school model and put four <laughs> assistant principals there. So each grade level gets their own assistant principal and gets a lot more intervention. I, I mean, those are all the conversations and no matter which model you choose, you're still going to have to sit down with the administrators and the teachers and say, this is what we're doing. What do you think is necessary to make this work? So in the 5-8 model, it's a totally new model with new things we're going to look at and figure out. A 5-6 model, we're going to have to go to, I think, Chris's point and say it failed miserably the last time because the second the initial people that were there left, whether it be teachers because the contract allows them to select out of the building and go to something that might be more convenient for them, mm -hmm. or the administrators choose a smaller building because it's they're burnt out or they want to go to a new district, that's when the wheels started coming off the wagon to Staley. So how do we prevent that from happening that after the first two or three years, we don't wind up with a dumpster fire? I mean, you're yeah. going to have elementary teachers that's though, with five, trip. six that are now in the junior high school that might say, I don't want to be in, I don't want to be in that either. I want to go back to Denty and teach second grade because they'll be able to, to do that's the same, what, that's right? What, right? That's what I'm saying. Like initially, no matter what, no matter what model shows them, the, the five, five six, six or thing, the five, if, if it goes five, six, I can promise you the first two or three years will be dynamite because the people that end up doing that are invested in making it work, right? That's the initial people that come together. But as soon as people retire, uh, if, to your point, if someone says, you know what, I thought I wanted to do sixth grade, but I want to go do third grade. So I'm going to leave. And then how do you fill that position? Usually what winds up happening is that building becomes filled with your most uh, inexperienced staff at one of the most critical times of the kids' lives. And that's kind of what happened at Staley and the wheels kind of came off the way. So it's not about how do you build it, it's how do you sustain it. I have faith in, my in you, mind, Peter. In my, in my opinion. I have faith in you. You can sustain and, the five six. And, and, and here's, the, and I, it's, I want to address this as well. I mean, I, I, I'm sorry that the that teachers might feel that we're somehow disrespecting them. I'm not disrespecting the teacher's opinions on this. I just have a difference of opinion. And so when I analyze the, the reasons as to why they don't like this particular model, and I and I look at why I favor the model, I just we just have a difference of opinion. And I think that we can, you know, and and, and a lot of it is based on on what the administrator tell me. I know, I know it's not, I, I'm not a teacher, but I am relying on, on on experts in this field as well. Okay. And I and so, you know, that and a lot of whom were educators and were in the classroom themselves, and, and they can they can envision the potential issues with a particular model. And so, I, you know, I, it's it's not that I'm 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 hearing what you're saying, and I'm like, no, you know, I don't know what you're talking about. I, I know better than you. I'm just saying that I examined some of the reasons as to why you don't like it. Uh, for me, these other factors outweigh it, and based on what the administration is telling me, as between the two models, the favored one. That's that's what's terribly important. It has nothing to do with disrespect. And I just want to make sure that, that people are clear on that. And, I think and, and it's okay for us to have a difference of opinion on this. The only um, thing with that I've learned um in the last probably 10 or 15 years for myself as I've you know in my career is that teachers don't move up because the next level is to become an administrator and that's what they wanna do. Your experts can be expert teachers. Just because you move up to be the principal doesn't mean you know more. I mean, you just are focusing on something a little different. So when we talk about experts, I think teachers, maybe, you know, people, teachers who've been around for a while, 
maybe the first few years, I understand that, but at what point does the teacher be able to say, this is my profession, I'm an expert. I don't care if I'm the superintendent, I don't care if I'm the principal, but I'm the expert here. I've been teaching for 25 years and, and that's all I'm saying. I think it's it's not like, you know, if I'm so good as a teacher, I'm moving up as a principal. You want different things, you, you're doing different things. So that's all. And I just want, I, I just want, I don't want to beat this down because we're going to have a, a mountain on the 8th. I need someone to please explain to me how August 8th works as far as a vote and how does one vote get put, uh, you know, one resolution get forward instead of another resolution? Because maybe you make a resolution for the 5-8, but I can make a resolution for the 5-6. So, how does that so work? We're just going to choose one to put on the, on the agenda. Okay. Um, we'll bring it forth by motion like we normally do. Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll read the resolution. I'll ask for a second. And then at that point, once I have the second, it's open for discussion. Right. So then we have the discussion. If it turns out that, that the, the uh, resolution as written is not the way we want to go, we can amend the resolution at that point and, and, and vote on, you know, what is going to be perceived as, as the model. That has the majority support, um, mm -hmm. and then at that point, um, it's it's going to be the, the the one that's implemented, and then you know because we have to get you know moving on this. I mean, we've got to get some sort of uh, a, a, a referendum ready for December, right. and part of that process is is letting the architects get to work now on you know how they conceptualize this and how they see it and get us some. <clears throat> Uh, ideas as to how it's going to look and, and what the funding might look like. So, um, so, so that's why we're, we're you know, we need to make some sort of decision. On that. And you know, this was something that you know we've been kicking around since January, February, March of this year. So I think we've I think we've provided enough opportunity for input and discussion and analysis and you know data retrieval, whatever you want to call it. Um, I think it's just time at this point to make a decision. Can I just ask you one more question? I know we all want to head home and start our weekend. So I heard you say that your, your perspective or why you're leaning towards K-8 is because you're leaning a lot of the administrators. Not K-8. Or, sorry. <laughs> That's oh, right. We'll spend a long day. Yeah. Um, Don't introduce another model. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I wait. My apologies. Um, and I just, I just need to check what I've heard today. So the only information I've heard from administrators is kind of what Peter just went through with the emails. Which, if I had to sum up what I heard, was really no actual opinion. So can you just give some insight when you're saying administrators? I don't know if you've heard, like, where are you hearing differently than what we heard today? In terms of what? So you said, like, based on, like, you felt like some of the feedback that you had gotten from K-8, or my God, I just did it again, for the 5-8 had come heavily from, like, administrators. So I'm just curious from what I heard today, which is, you know, we obviously haven't been involved since well, January. I'm not, I'm not going and pulling administrators and talking to them. I'm talking to Peter. And you know when we're talking about the different models that are, the two models that are up for um, uh, you know consideration on our state, you know I have to rely on the conversations that he's had. And, you know uh, what I'm getting from Peter, he can speak for himself, obviously. On this, is that if we're going to have uh, uh, um, those two models as being the ones, which one is, is the preferred model and why? Um, I think that the consensus. What he's hearing is the final. So I feel like I did not hear that today from you. No, I mean, personally, I would choose the five eight or the five six. I just think it's more sustainable. Five six is going to cause you major problems within years, and we can all say that that's not going to happen, and it's going to happen. It's just, it's just a fact. Five eight may be less sustainable because it's new and we haven't done that before. I think it's a lot easier to figure out how to make it work. And there's a lot more benefits that I feel for the 5-8 over the 5 six, seven. I think when you talk to a lot of administrators, I went through the list that was shared with me. If you were to go and ask, again, you're gonna get a different opinion from a principal to a, a district level person. Someone that sees the bigger picture, 
they're probably going to say go 5.8 over 5.6. If you talk to someone that's, you know, in the buildings, they're probably going to say, they're probably going to try and push it for a K-5 standalone 6, 7, 8 is, is really where I think those principles are landing in. Okay. Anything else? I know you always look at me. <laughs> well, only because oh, okay. I'm, I'm, okay. I stare at Danielle too, right? She probably thinks the same thing. Like, no, just so you know. It's just that. Yo, you know, just I'm, so I'm you know, you do way. not scare me in any I'm way. I'm not trying to scare you at all. I, 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 I don't know that I scare many people. Yeah. So. <laughs> Thank you we're all for your time today. Hell yeah, we're That's the right. <laughs> yeah. So when you when you move this way, whoever's in, in that chair, I'm just staring at them first too. So working my way around the table. Uh, okay. There's nothing else. But I guess we'll head into our weekend, and we still have you know it's, it's July 29th, so there's still another nine ten days for people to chime in. Okay. Very good. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. This was helpful. Yeah. Okay. Bye, John.